We think a lot about our skin. Should I get a tattoo, or do I need to put on sunscreen, or even, what would happen if I pulled all my skin off? But how often do we think of skin as the largest organ in our body, spanning two square meters, the standard size of a blanket, and accounting for 16% of the body? It is also the only organ that humans casually decide to paint, tattoo, pierce, and apply creams and medicine to without worrying about causing the body to shut down. Imagine doing the same thing to your brain or liver. The skin that covers us is part of the larger integumentary system, which also includes the hair, nails, and glands. It's a remarkable and remarkably important system because its main function is protection. It shields our internal environment from all the dangers of the external one, such as wind, dust, pathogens, and sunlight. Even the origin of integumentary comes from Latin, where it means a covering. However, our skin isn't just a covering. It has several other important functions as well. It prevents water loss, so you don't shrivel up like a prune. It's involved in thermal regulation, keeping you warm and helping you cool off when you need it. Skin is also a sensory organ, allowing you to feel physical contact, pain, and changes in temperature. Also, when the skin encounters sunlight, it can kickstart the chemical reactions that eventually create vitamin D. To understand how the skin performs all these functions, let's take a look at how it's structured. The skin is divided into three parts. From the outermost to the innermost part, you have the epidermis, then the dermis, and lastly, the hypodermis or subcutaneous tissue. First, let's look at the epidermis. The epidermis is primarily composed of layers of keratinized stratified squamous epithelial, or keratinocytes, stacked one on top of the other. Keratinocytes are your skin cells, and they contain a protein called keratin, which toughens up the skin cells against damage. This layer also contains melanocytes, the cells that produce the pigment melanin, which gives your skin its color. There are no blood vessels in this layer. The epidermis is further divided into four to five other layers. These layers are divided based on the appearance of the skin cells as they mature. We'll explain why this happens in the later part of the video. Right now, let's look at these layers, from the outside to the inside. The stratum corneum, stratum granulosum, stratum spinosum, and stratum basale. These four layers are present in the thin skin. However, there is also thick skin which is only present in your palms and feet, the two areas exposed to the most friction. Thick skin has a fifth layer called stratum lucidum, which is present between the first and third layers. A common mnemonic to remember the complicated names of these layers is Come, let's get sunburned. Corneum, lucidum, granulosum, spinosum, and basale. These layers make your skin somewhat waterproof. You don't absorb water from your skin into your body, nor do you directly lose water. Next up is the dermis, which means skin in Latin. In the dermis, you'll find connective tissues, hair follicles, blood vessels, lymphatic vessels, nerve cells, and sweat glands. This layer is responsible for keeping you cool via sweat. The hair follicles are attached to muscles that generate goosebumps. Blood vessels carry body heat to the skin where the heat can escape. The lymph vessels and immune cells protect your skin from pathogens and injury. Scattered throughout the epidermis and dermis are different types of nerve cells and touch receptors that enable our sense of touch. The dermis is composed of two layers, the papillary and reticular layers. In the papillary layer, the connective tissue is made of two proteins, collagen and elastin, which together form a loose mesh. The papillary layer also contains phagocytes, a type of specialized immune cell. The reticular layer has tightly packed and dense connective tissue made of collagen and elastin. Collagen and elastin are what makes your skin stretchy and elastic. Last, we come to the hypodermis, which is made of fat and connective tissue. The fat, stored in adipose tissue, insulates and cushions the skin. Below the hypodermis is the layer of connective tissue called fascia, which is connected to the muscles. Now, let's take a look at how the skin creates new skin cells. Normal wear and tear damages the first layer, so the skin produces new cells and sheds the old ones. Say you want to get tattooed. At first, you try to do it at home. You poke your skin and deposit the pigment, 
It lasts for a few days, but as the skin heals, the tattoo disappears. This is because you only deposited the ink in your epidermal layer, and the cells in the epidermis are constantly replacing themselves. This skin regeneration begins with immature skin cells in the stratum basale. From there, the skin cells migrate upwards, changing their shape and gaining more keratin, which makes the skin tough. By the time the keratinocytes reach the stratum corneum, they're tough and nearly dead. These old skin cells are then shed away. Now, imagine going to a tattoo artist. This time, the tattoo doesn't disappear. This is because they deposit the ink all the way into the dermis. In the dermis, the immune cell macrophages eat the ink and hold it inside them. When the macrophage dies, it releases the ink, which is then engulfed and stored by a new macrophage. Because of the ink's chemical composition, the macrophages cannot destroy the ink. And just like that, your tattoo is permanent. Mm -hmm. Another cool thing your skin does is protect you from the UV rays of the sun. Melanin protects the skin from the sun's UV rays. The color of your skin depends on how much melanin you produce. There are two types of melanin that give skin and hair its color. Eumelanin, which is a brown to black color, and pheomelanin, which is a reddish-orange color. People from parts of the world where the sun is particularly harsh, such as those closer to the equator and in tropical regions, have higher quantities of eumelanin, which better protects against UV rays. Thus, these people also tend to have a darker skin tone. The skin of individuals whose ancestors have lived in parts of the world with less sunlight produce less melanin, so these people have a lighter skin tone. Simultaneously, the skin is also where your body can produce vitamin D. When UV rays from the sunlight hit the skin, it converts a cholesterol molecule present in the skin into vitamin D3. The body naturally produces this cholesterol molecule. This vitamin D3 then moves to the liver and the kidneys, where it is converted into the active form of the vitamin. However, without that initial dose of sunlight, the chain of events does not take place. Too much exposure to sunlight can be bad. UV rays can damage the DNA of skin cells and cause the skin to develop fine lines, wrinkles, and uneven pigmentation. Naturally, as we age, our skin will age too. The skin will produce fewer new cells, the connections between cells become weaker, and the fat in the hypodermis diminishes, leading to wrinkles and sagging skin. However, no matter its age or condition, our skin will do all it can to protect our insides from the outside.